boys and girls, it's Saturday. It's February 19th. There's no NBA. UFC is pretty early today. There's a good boxing match today. But you know what? It's about college hoops. Tons of games. I think over 100 games of college basketball. My name is Rafael Esparza. That's Robert Faringo. We're from Doc Sports. If you want that free $60 account, click the link up above. Get that free $60 account because we have tons of stuff on Saturday. Like I said, college hoops, NASCAR uh, rolls around, drives in circles starting up now. We have NBA dunk contest, three points, the All-Star game. You can bet college basketball on Sunday if you don't want to watch the All-Star game. NHL is clicking on there. But don't forget, this is all about Saturday's college hoops, which is a huge, huge, huge card from tip-off at, what, 9 in, 9 in the morning and then a late game at 11. I wish Hawaii was playing, maybe have a, a 12 o'clock game, but they're not. So it should be a fun game. Faringo, it's going to be a long day of college hoops on Saturday. We're going to start off with the Big Ten. I still don't understand why Big Ten puts these big marquee matchups first thing in the morning because I don't even have a cup of coffee in my system yet. Illinois, Michigan State. This was a tough one. Michigan State's coming into this game losing four out of five. What do you think about Illinois and Michigan State first crack in the morning on Saturday? Yeah, neither one of these teams is playing particularly well right now. They're both ranked in the top 20, but Illinois is coming off. I don't want to call it a bad loss at Rutgers because Rutgers is really, really good at home. We've seen them pull a lot of upsets over ranked teams recently. Illinois is just the latest victim. Uh, but Illinois, they've lost three of their last five on the road. They're just two and seven against the spread in their last nine games. They are not playing well right now. Then again, neither is Michigan State. They've lost three out of four. Their last loss was a bad one to a mediocre Penn State team. <sighs> I just don't know. I don't know about this game. I don't love betting against Michigan. I think Illinois is the better team, and I think that they are more primed for a bounce back. I, I, I have less questions about Illinois than I do Michigan State. But Michigan State's so tough in their home gym. I really don't. They're one of those teams that I either bet on them in their home gym or I stay away. They're five and two against the spread in the last seven meetings. Illinois' physicality doesn't really bother Michigan State. Uh, you know, th this is probably going to be a no play for me, but it's real interesting. I have Illinois as a one-point underdog. That's what I'm making this number at. This kind of sets the theme of the day, this noon tip, right? We got a lot of games where there's going to be one and two-point spreads, kind of coin flip games. Uh, so it's this is one of the tougher ones to call in a day that's going to be tough to call. Yeah, I was really hoping Rutgers, uh, they would have beat Rutgers in their last game because I thought maybe I can get maybe Illinois a two-point favorite, maybe somewhere around there, and maybe look at Michigan State. Because their last two road games, Illinois, they lost by double digits uh, their last two road games. So they have not been playing well on a road. Uh, it should be interesting. I agree with you. I think it's going to be a low favorite. Illinois probably a one. Wouldn't be shocked if it's a pick em. Uh But again, horrible time slot. This game should be in a 2 o'clock game where I can enjoy it instead of these early games. I'm still watching soccer at, at that time slot uh, for uh, for that game. But another early game could be, oh, wait a minute, a half hour later than the Big Ten early game. We have Texas Tech going to, should I hook them down or hook them up? I'll just leave them alone. Texas, uh, we're going against Texas on Saturday morning. What about this one? Here's another one that's just a head scratcher. Would not be shocked if the odds makers lean towards Texas Tech a little bit on this one. I'm excited to see what they post, post on that one. Texas Tech at Texas. What do you like? I think Texas is going to be a small favorite. Again, I had them at minus one. Not going to be surprised if it's a pick. I think the money in this game will move it. You know, you, you make the point, why are these marquee games being played at noon Eastern, 1230 Eastern? It drives me crazy. It's actually a good it's actually a good point, not just, you know, these should be set in prime time for our viewing pleasure, but this is an 11.30 a.m. tip-off in Texas, okay? That Michigan State game is an 11 a.m. tip-off for those teams. Are we going to see them at their best? You know, Texas Tech and Texas are two top 20 defensive teams. Texas Tech really likes to get after it defensively. Are they going to be at their best that early in the morning. That's, you know, an interesting thing to see. Another subplot in this game is that it doesn't look like Trey Mitchell is going to play for Texas, the transfer forward from UMass. Kid can do it all. He's only averaged about eight or nine points for the Longhorns so far this year, but he's a really, really good player. Uh, he has left the team. Hopefully everything is, is okay for him, but Texas isn't going to have him. This is going to be one of the more emotional games of the day. Uh, if you remember, Texas coach Chris Beard used to coach at Texas Tech. <laughs> they played just a few weeks ago. Beard had to come back to uh, Red Raider territory. He was not welcome back. Like, the police had no. to escort him, you know, onto the court and off the court. It was it was nasty. 
And the Red Raiders destroyed Texas in that game. Very emotional. Uh, are we going to see the scales tip the other way with this Texas crowd? Um, are they going to back their man? Are they going to back this team? You know, I've been selling Texas Tech all year. I, I, you want to talk about a team that I think is primed for a first-round loss in the NCAA tournament? It's Texas Tech. I've been wrong about it up until this point. But there's something about this team I still don't like. I think the revenge factor, I think the emotion factor, I think a lot, you know, Texas Tech in a letdown spot after their comeback win over Baylor. I think a lot of things are pointing towards Texas in this game. Yeah, keep an eye out for this total as well. You guys all know I love me some totals. Last two games, Texas Tech had played, they scored over 80 points. The first matchup when Texas Tech beat down, that flew over the total as well. So this was going to be very interesting. It's going to be my total radar. But again, 11.30, I'm still watching English Premier League soccer. Uh, so it's going to be hard for me to see what kind of line movement is going on in this one. But it should be a fantastic matchup. To, uh, I, I, I hope that Texas could get some redemption back for, for the head coach. But boy, he was in a hot seat when he was up in Red Raider country uh, on that one. Next game we're going this one. Hey, we finally have a nice card marquee matchup in the afternoon. Hooray. Tennessee at Arkansas, another SEC matchup. And this one should be a fun game. Boy, is anyone playing any hotter than Tennessee right now? Uh, this this team's been fun. I loved how they just whooped up on Kentucky in their last game. But now they're on the road against uh, the Razorbacks. Who do you like in this one? It's interesting because going back to that Texas-Texas Tech game, the setup of that game where Texas went to Texas Tech got demolished, and now they have their chance for revenge. Very similar to what Tennessee just went through with Kentucky. Those two played early in SEC play. I want to say Kentucky beat them by like 27. They humiliated them in Lexington. Tennessee got their revenge game this week, and they took advantage. They, they dominated from start to finish against the Wildcats. Tennessee's won five straight. But you asked if there's anybody that's hotter than them right now. I could make the argument that Arkansas is. They've won 10 out of 11. They have one of the best home court advantages in the SEC. Home court has been huge in this series. The home team has won six straight between these two. I, there's something about both of these teams that I don't trust. Arkansas, it's just their schedule. They haven't played and they haven't beaten a lot of top-tier teams. They really have played kind of a soft schedule, both in the non-conference and in the SEC. So it's not that they can't be a top team. It's just that I haven't seen it from them enough. With Tennessee, it's just all about Rick Barnes. They have tons of talent, but I don't trust Rick Barnes at all. Like, I've seen it so many times from this guy at Texas, at Tennessee. They're coming off the big win against Kentucky. I would not be surprised at all if they flop in this matchup. I think this game is going to open as a pick, and then I think the betters are going to sort out who's going to end up being kind of that, that one-point favorite. Yeah, I'm looking at Arkansas probably to – I'm leaning towards them on this game just because, that you said, it, their home court advantage is just huge. That crowd goes nuts. And uh, I think this is their marquee game win that they that they need. You said it yourself. They have not had that good marquee win against maybe a ranked team or something like that. They played a horrible non-conference schedule. I think that's why their record looks what it is. Uh, I'm excited to watch this game, and I'm glad it's in the afternoon uh, so we can enjoy it uh, and maybe have a cocktail instead of still drinking coffee like those early games. We're going to go to another great matchup that I'm excited to watch. Kansas, the number six ranked Kansas Jayhawks versus West Virginia. I know West Virginia's 14 11. They have not really played, but they have trouble playing the Mountaineers year after year. It seems like they, this is one team that they normally can't just pull away. Can they pull away in this one? Even though West Virginia has lost four out of five coming in this one, can Kansas get the big road W against a team that, man, they just have a hard time covering and putting them away? What do you think? All right, I hate to answer a question with a question. But I have to, Raphael, where do you have this number? Because I think my number mm. is going to surprise you. I mean, I think we both agree. Kansas is going to be the favorite. I think it's going to be like between either four, five, and six. I mean, I, they blew up Oklahoma State, but that was on a road. Their last road game, they lost to Texas. So I think that's going to – I would not be shocked if it's around those three numbers. Okay, then my number isn't going to surprise you. Because Kansas is a six-point favorite. I think that that is going to suck in a lot of square money. Okay, I think the public is going to be all over Kansas. I wouldn't be surprised if 75, 80% of the tickets in this game are written on the Jayhawks. Now, that's not to say that they won't go into West Virginia and win by a blowout. Uh, Huggy Bear just hasn't had it with this year's team. You know, and, and if you're talking about player of the year race, 
One of the things I always say in sports, when a guy leaves to take a uh, coach leaves to take another job or a guy transfers in, in college or free agent leaves is that you don't just judge their impact based on how they do it in their new situation. Also look back at what happened after they're gone. Oscar to am I saying that right? Oscar Shibwe, uh, the transfer from West Virginia to Kentucky. Look at what Kentucky's doing now with him anchoring the center of that team. And look at how West Virginia has fallen apart without him. Uh, they're one and nine straight up in their last 10 games. They're two and eight against the spread. So it's not even like they've been playing close and just taking close losses. Something about this game, though, really is dangerous. I feel like this could be, a, you know, West Virginia is one of those teams. They're not going to the NCAA tournament. This could be their national championship type of game. They do play differently in their home court. They lost by 25 points at Kansas early in the season, got humiliated, would love to get some revenge. I'm just telling you, public, beware. Do not get sucked into loading up on the Jayhawks in this matchup. Yeah, this one's going to be a very popular money line ticket with Kansas uh, on their ticket to all day Saturday when people are betting college troops. I can guarantee you that one. The last game we're going to talk about before we head off and enjoy our weekend with no NBA, Oregon Ducks, Arizona, one of the hotter teams playing right now. I actually saw a media person say Arizona cuts down the nets. I can't remember the last time a Pac-12 cut down the nets uh, for the national championship. Oregon visiting Tucson, Arizona, and plays the Wildcats Saturday at 9 o'clock. Who do you like? Okay, once again, where you got this number, Raphael? What do you, what do you oh, think this one's going to be? The way, the way the Ducks looked on a uh, Thursday night. Man, Arizona's got to be a double digits. I mean, I think I had – if you would have asked me that question before tip-off against Arizona State, my number is probably way different because they just looked horribly bad. I think Arizona's got a double-digit favorite against the Ducks. I had it at about 13 and a half before the Arizona State game. I think it's going to be around 15 and a half, six. I wouldn't be surprised if Arizona is a 16 point favorite in this game, yeah. which is just unbelievable to think about. But they were 26 point favorites against Oregon State. Now, they never came close to covering that spread, but it just goes to show you that the odds makers are way out in front of this Arizona team. And for good reason, they've been crushing people. You know, head coach Tommy Lloyd. Learned uh, up in Gonzaga, he's got that Mark Few approach of they don't just beat people, they embarrass them. They go full tilt, full throttle all game. Uh, you know, they just keep beating teams by double digits. So you got to ask yourself, do you want to jump in front of the buzzsaw that is Arizona right now? Oregon had been playing better basketball. They were going into the Arizona State game. They were 11-2 and two in their last 13 games. They did have a terrible loss to Cal as a double-digit favorite at home. And then they come back with this horrible loss to Arizona State. So there's kind of no telling what the Ducks are going to bring to the table in this one. They did beat USC and UCLA in back-to-back -back games on the road earlier in the season. So which Ducks team is going to show up? The one that beat UCLA you know, in, in Hollywood or the one that just lost to Arizona State by 20-plus by points? It's going to be a big number. It's going to be, I think, a very interesting game. Yeah, and this is, I'm going to throw my free play out this, on this one. I'm looking at this total. If this one's anything lower than uh, in the 150s, I bet it over. I just, you said it. Arizona has just been crushing people. They put up 83 against the Beavers. They put up 92 against Washington. Uh, they're averaging over 70-plus in, their, I think, their last six games. I think in their last nine games, 70 points have, have been racked up nine times. Uh, we're going to see a big number on Arizona's offense. So, again, I kind of like to over in this one. I'm waiting for that number to come up. If it's anything lower than 150s, uh, you got to jump on this over. Because the Ducks, we just saw it. ASU put up 81 points against them, and they had no answer for them in the second half. That bet, that's that loss for Cal. I just, I think you ripped that that spirit and, and that momentum uh, out of them, uh, not losing two out of three. I think they get blown up. Arizona puts up. I would not be shocked. They put up 85 or more against uh, the Ducks defense. Do you have anything of a free gem to, to give our uh, team to watch out for Saturday? Yeah, I, I will have a seven-unit play on the card for, for tomorrow. It's not going to be a monster, monster Saturday college card for me. Uh, I'm going to go with a few fewer plays for some higher units. There are some hidden gems out there. Uh, one free play that I will give out that will probably end up being a rated play is I do like Texas. I think Texas gets that win tomorrow against Texas Tech. I think that they have a lot of things pointing their way. They're catching Texas Tech. Coming on the road after that big win over Baylor, Texas Tech didn't play well for most of that game against Baylor, a beat-up Bears team. 
I think revenge is a motivator. I think Chris Beard really, 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 really wants this game after what happened <laughs> up in Lubbock. Really? This is a veteran Texas team that I think will rally around their new coach. Uh, I think Texas, who has generally been an untrustworthy team over the last 10 years, they've been one of the worst against the spread teams in college basketball for the last decade. Tough to trust them in big games and big spots like this. But I actually think Beard is going to coach a good, solid effort out of this team. I think Texas comes to play. Well, there you go, boys and girls. That was Robert Faringo. I am Rafael Esparza. Don't forget to get that free $60 account. Use them for Ringo's Monster College Basketball card. I'll have a nice card on college hoops, UFC, everything you can think about on Saturday. But have a fantastic, fantastic weekend. Cash big. I'm not going to say Carpum DM like Faringo knows. I'm just going to say, hey, guys, please don't bet what you don't have. Deuces.